He's a cold-hearted snake. Ooh. Look into his eyes. Uh oh. oh. He's, He's been, been lying on a rock trying to get warmth out of his environment. Hey there, Meatbags, Trace here for D News to talk about why you're all so hot. But really, you're hot. It's because of thermoregulation. Science divides thermoregulation into endothermic or ectothermic, homeothermic or poikilothermic. Endo and ectothermic describe an animal that either makes its own heat or gets it from its environment. Homeo and poikilothermic describe whether the temperature is constant. A cute little Siamese cat, for example, is an endotherm and a homeotherm. It makes its own heat and it maintains a constant body temperature. Most mammals and birds are endothermic homeotherms, what elementary school would call warm-blooded. Fish, amphibians, reptiles, and most invertebrates are ectothermic poikilotherms. They get heat from the environment and let their body temperature fluctuate, what the youths would then call cold-blooded. But that's only part of the picture. They make their own heat, but don't always maintain it. Some fish maintain a constant temperature and create heat by swimming from colder to warmer water, but they can't generate it themselves. Leatherback turtles and laminid sharks do this too. All I'm saying is, it's a wider world than the black and white of cold versus warm blood. But that's not all. Dinosaurs used to be thought of as cold-blooded terror lizards that would obviously make amazing park attractions, so don't worry, because nothing could go wrong. But a study in science found that dinosaurs were likely mesotherms. They use a combination of internal processes and environmental factors to adjust their overall body temperature. Plus, animals that hibernate like chipmunks and some bats are heterothermic. Yeah, it gets confusing. The reason we simplify it to warm and cold-blooded is because temperature, which is mainly circulated by the blood, affects things like muscle function and brain size. Colder muscles react slower, meaning that ectothermic animals have to behave sluggishly when the environment is cooler. They don't have a choice, even if a predator is around. According to Spring and Holly's introduction to zoology, with an 18 degree Fahrenheit change in temperature, muscles contract three times faster, pulling three times the power. Knowing this, you can understand why yellowfin tuna evolved to be poikilotherms. Warmer muscles react better, allowing them to keep their bodies at a slightly higher temperature than the surrounding water. Thus, they maximize their power and can catch prey. Mammals and birds range in temperature from 97 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit, and that has a cost. We have to eat to live and regulate our metabolism. Pandas spend 10 to 16 hours each day just eating and the British Medical Journal recorded hunger strikers who lasted 40 days without food, but that's child's play. Pythons can go a year between meals because they're cold-blooded. So why aren't we just slightly regulating our temperatures, like the tuna? It seems like a big waste to burn all this energy and stay hot all the time, right? All that heat keeps our muscles ready for action. Endothermic animals can almost always outrun ectothermic animals, assuming, of course, they survive the initial strike because ectothermic animals are better at that initial attack. Think like a snake or a really fast fish. Insects with cold muscles can't fly. The sphinx moth vibrates its muscles before takeoff so it gets them all warm. Plus, cold animals may miss opportunities to use their muscles to get all up on and mate. Warm-blooded animals, we can mate anytime, which, you know, that's fun. Plus, all that energy and heat allows for the evolution of more complex brain structures, which allowed me to learn to talk to you right now. That being said, it's hot, and it's real hot, and sometimes it's just too hot or too cold, so animals that evolved to be homeothermic, maintaining body temperature, also had to evolve fur or blubber to stay warm and sweat glands or panting to cool off. But that's a whole other video. If you wanna know why we sweat and how awesome we humans are at it, check out this video. Much of it's reabsorbed or evaporates before you even notice. The average person has 2.6 million sweat glands in their skin, and working at maximum overdrive, a human can produce two or three liters of perspiration every hour. Do you have a science question that you want us to answer? YouTube gave us a comment section for a reason, so y'all could troll, but you could also use them to maybe ask a science question. You know, try that one. And please subscribe. We are here every day for our subscribers. I love my job, so from the bottom of my heart, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on D News.